Please be seated. Our scripture reading this morning comes from the book of Acts, chapter 1, verses 1 through 11. Please join me in prayer. Holy Spirit, open our eyes that we might see wonderful truth out of your word this morning. Amen. Hear the word of the Lord. In my former book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and to teach until the day he was taken up to heaven. After giving instructions to the Holy Spirit to the apostles he had chosen, after his suffering, he presented himself to them and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command, Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. When they gathered around him and asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, It is not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. After he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes, and a cloud hid him from their sight. They were looking intently up into the sky as he was going, when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking into the sky? This same Jesus, who has been taken from you into heaven, will come back in the same way as you have seen him go into heaven. This is the word of the Lord.
The Lord God is so very pleased and glad that you're here today on Ascension Sunday. Ascension Sunday is when we get to celebrate and lift high the name of the Lord Jesus Christ as he ascended into heaven to assume his throne and be forever known as the King of glory who reigns forever and ever. Amen. And these next three Sundays are really a trifecta of holiness because this time of year is one of my absolute favorite times of the church year. In fact, I know that it will be a revival in America when these next three Sundays are packed out as much as Christmas and Easter are packed out when people would come. Because this Sunday we celebrate the ascension of Jesus Christ. Next Sunday we celebrate the coming of the Holy Spirit, Pentecost. And the Sunday after that is the only time we celebrate a doctrine in the Christian church, and that is the doctrine of the Holy Trinity. What a blessed, blessed truth that is, one that we can never surrender and we must always lift high. And so these next three Sundays are so incredibly vital for the strengthening of the Christian church. And it begins on Ascension Sunday, which we just read about, that we see these uh, beautiful words in verse 9. After he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes, and a cloud hid them from their sight. They were looking intently up into the sky as he was going, when suddenly two men dressed in white, which would be angels, stood beside them. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking into the sky? This same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. And this is the great good news of Jesus. This same Jesus, this same Jesus who died on the cross for your sins, this same Jesus who was resurrected on the third day, this same Jesus went up into heaven, and this same Jesus reigns supreme for you, and this same Jesus is going to come back for you someday. At the second coming, this same Jesus, the Jesus we love in Scripture, is what the angels were talking about. And they were verifying that this Jesus and this Jesus only is the Savior of the world. And they gave it all of their heart to let you know that it is the verifiable, it is the actual, the true Jesus of Nazareth that we worship and who is reigning supreme over us and is the head of the church. You know, the good news of Jesus isn't just that he did something for us in the past, as wonderful it is, and dying on the cross for our sins, and resurrecting so that we might have eternal life as well. And the good news of Jesus isn't that he is just, he's going to come, and someday he is going to make what is wrong and make it right, and he's going to take what is crooked and make it straight, but the good news of Jesus Christ is that right now, according to the ascension, right now, according to the Bible, he sits at the right hand of God the Father, and he reigns supreme for you. He is for you in heaven. And the doctrine of the ascension, along with the doctrine of the Pentecost, teaches us the greatest truth, I think, in many ways in the Christian church, that we literally have the best of both worlds. When someone dies in the Lord, believing in the Lord Jesus Christ, they know that they are going to be greeted in heaven by the risen Savior, the ascended Lord Jesus Christ. What an incredible comfort for those of us who are survivors and are left on the earth to know that our loved ones who die in Christ will be received by Jesus Christ the Lord. That is one world, and we have Christ standing for us right now in heaven. But also we have the best of both worlds, because Jesus says in this passage, he says in verse 10, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth, that we also have the indwelling Holy Spirit in us, who survive our loved ones and remain here in the earth. We are not orphans, Jesus says. We have the indwelling Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Christ, 
to guide us and to comfort us and to be with us. And so as a person dies in the Lord, the two things that they always talk to the pastor about is what is it going to be like when I'm received into heaven? What is that going to be like? And it is such comfort for them to hear about Jesus Christ reigning supreme for them and he's going to receive them into his presence and they're going to see him face to face. But then they also ask, what about my family? What about my loved ones? Well, for those who know the Lord, they will have the Holy Spirit indwelling them and comforting them and guiding them and protecting them. And so we truly have the best of both worlds. We have, because of the ascension of Jesus Christ, Jesus reigning supreme in heaven. He is the triumphant Savior who is for us in heaven. And also we have the transforming Spirit indwelling us who is really Christ working through us and maturing us as a Christian people that yes, Jesus has done it all for us in salvation, but when it comes to our sanctification, our growing in the grace and knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ, when it comes to loving other people in the name of Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit works through us. He doesn't do all of it for us. He works through us so that we might become more mature and conformed in the image of Christ and more like Him as we love one another. And so we have this incredible doctrine going over these next three Sundays of the Ascension, Christ for us in heaven, the Pentecost, which would be the Holy Spirit in us, indwelling us, and Christ working through us from heaven. And then we have the doctrine of the Trinity. When we put it all together, there is only one God, but in the one God, mystery of mysteries and marvels of marvels, there are three persons. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And as you see in this beautiful account of the Ascension, we see that actually played out in this great account of the Ascension. Look at verse 4. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command, Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my Father promised you. There is the first person of the Trinity, God the Father, which you have heard me speak about, and that is the second person of the Trinity, God the Son. For John baptized with water in a few days, you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. There is the third person of the Trinity, the Holy Spirit. Then he goes on to say in verse 7, when they were talking about prophecy, and Jesus didn't want to talk about prophecy, he wanted to talk about proclamation, about witnessing for him. He says, it's not for you to know the times or dates the Father has sent. There is God the Father again, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, God the Holy Spirit, and you will be my witnesses, God the Son in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. We see here beautifully in this passage the Holy Trinity represented as well. And it is though in these beautiful words all the three Sundays that we will be remembering the ascension of Christ, the Pentecost, the coming of the Holy Spirit, and the triune God of the Bible is all included here to get our hearts thirsty and to stir us up to want to glorify God in these next three Sundays with all our heart. You know, you can't read this passage without realizing that when Jesus is on his throne in heaven right now, he is the Lord over all. He is sovereign over every life, whether they be Christian or not. He is the sovereign one. And the way Dr. Luke tells this story, he really zeroes in on the power of Jesus Christ from heaven. Look at the way he describes the history of Jesus Christ in verses 1 through 5. In my former book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and teach until the day he was taken up to heaven and given instructions to the Holy Spirit to the apostles he had chosen. After his suffering, that would be his death on the cross, he presented himself to them at the resurrection and giving many proofs that he was alive, he appeared to them over a period of 40 days. And so actually Ascension Day is last Thursday, 
but we celebrate it on a Sunday. And we, this is the only place in Scripture where we're told that Jesus reappeared to the disciples for 40 days after the resurrection and then eventually would ascend into heaven uh, as he promises to give the Holy Spirit. And what did he speak about during those 40 days? He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God, the sovereignty of God. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. We'll speak more about that next week. But what I love about all that he says about the history of Jesus Christ in these first five verses is what he says right away in verse 1. In my former book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and teach. The implication and the clear message of the book of Acts is Jesus still is doing in heaven. He is still reigning supreme. He is still the all-powerful one. And by his spirit, who is the holy schoolmaster of all our hearts as the Holy Spirit teaches us the things of Christ, he is teaching us even now. He just began to do those things on earth. He still reigns supreme in heaven, and he still does that for us in heaven today. What a glorious picture Dr. Luke gives us. But then he gives us another picture of the reigning power of Jesus Christ when he looks at the Christ mission, which is verses 6 through 8. Then they gathered around him and asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom in Israel? He said to them, It is not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. He is going to give us, by way of the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Christ, power. Power to be what? My witnesses, Jesus says, not God's witnesses, not the Spirit's witnesses, but as we say a church is to be a Christ-centered church, but my witnesses, witness of this same Jesus, this same Jesus who loved the disciples is the same Jesus that loves you. We are the witnesses of that great truth. And so here we see that from heaven, he is calling us to be My witnesses, to be the witnesses for Jesus Christ, he still reigns supreme and he marshals his church where he wishes her to go and he has her do the mission which he has given them the power to fulfill by the Holy Spirit. And then we see the reign of Christ. Verse 9, after he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes and a cloud hid him from their sight. They were looking intently up into the sky as he's going, when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them. Men of Galilee, they said, Why do you stand here looking into the sky? This same Jesus, that is the powerful phrase, this same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. Talking about the reign of Jesus Christ, that someday Jesus Christ will return, but now. He's reigning supreme in heaven. Now, as Jesus left this earth visibly, as he left this earth bodily, so too will he come back. As he left this earth with God's chariot of the clouds bringing him up, so too will he come back with the clouds bringing him back to this earth to consummate all the plan of God. It is simply a glorious reminder of the reign of Jesus Christ. You know, I love Ascension Sunday. I love it with all my heart because I don't preach something about the past. I don't preach something about the future. I get to preach something that's happening right now, the sovereign lordship of Jesus Christ, his beautiful, blessed, perfect reign from heaven over us right now. And I was looking this week for an illustration of how Jesus reigns supreme in heaven. He is the triumphant Savior for us. And also how the Holy Spirit indwells us and He's the transforming Holy Spirit in us. And on Thursday, the perfect story emerged in the news. I couldn't believe it. 
Man, if I could have written a story like it, I would have. I would have even lied to get such a good story out here, but I couldn't. But this is a real story. You know, the nation's capital allows for every state in the Union to have a statue in the nation's capital of somebody that they think exemplifies the ideals of America. And Jesus Christ, who reigns supreme as sovereign over all, somehow had the state of North Carolina remove a statue because this person was found out to be a white supremacist and to be a racist and that should have no place in our nation's capital. So who did North Carolina select to replace this racist? None other than the evangelist Billy Graham. And on this Thursday, the 16th, his statue will be uh, seen and revealed. And it just is amazing to me that God, Jesus in heaven, has orchestrated events to take away someone who is a blight on America to put in someone who really not only gave the hope of Jesus Christ, but you know, long before working on behalf of reconciling the races, long before that was cool, Billy Graham was in the forefront of that. He wanted to bring all people together in Jesus Christ. And what a wonderful man to have in the nation's capital. It's just, to me, a remarkable story. But what's even more remarkable is Jesus reigns supreme in heaven. He is the triumphant Savior for us. But he also reigns by the transforming power of his Holy Spirit in us. And the man who was chosen to put this sculpture together of Billy Graham is a believer. And you can tell that the Holy Spirit was working in his heart as to what to do because the sculpture has Billy Graham holding up the Bible and pointing to the Bible as the hope of the world. And in that sculpture, the Holy Spirit convinced the sculpturist to put in two Bible verses. And when I read what the Bible verses were, my heart just soared. God wants his son to be glorified. The first Bible verses I bet you can imagine is John 3, 16. You want that in the nation's capital? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall never perish but have eternal life. That is going into the capital. And then there is another one. One that I so am glad because it relates to this Ascension Sunday. And that is John 14, 6. Where Jesus so eloquently yet so clearly says with such authority, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through That is what the Ascension of Jesus Christ is all about. He is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. And he has provided us the way to heaven. The reason why we know those angels are going to get us into the pearly gates in heaven to see Jesus, the reason why we know that's going to happen is because he's already provided us the way. He has already been our good shepherd. He will always be our good shepherd. And he will guide us exactly as he so wonderfully went to be upon his throne of glory, also that great throne of grace for us in heaven. We have the best of both worlds. We have a Savior that reigns supreme for us, a triumphant Savior who is for us in heaven, who prays for us to God the Father, who oversees us and is our shepherd from heaven who is the governor and king of our lives. And we also have his promised Holy Spirit that also comes from the Father who indwells us, who is the transforming Holy Spirit that is making us every day to be more and more like the Lord Jesus Christ who is sanctifying us in the truth because God's word is truth who is strengthening us and comforting us in all our despairs so that we might know 
the wondrous love that is found in Jesus Christ, that he will never leave us nor forsake us. As we come to this next beautiful hymn, Crown Him with Many Crowns, we are going to sing about how the Lamb of God is on his throne. And we're going to sing about that he is our matchless king, that we are called to hail through all eternity. Rededicate your lives today to the sovereign <coughs> glory of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for sending Jesus. We thank you so much for receiving him in those chariots of those chariots of clouds, that you received him unto glory, that he is the king of glory this day and forevermore. We are so happy that we are called to crown him with many crowns. And we pray, Lord, that you will stir in our hearts such uh, joy over Jesus Christ reigning supreme from heaven forever and ever, that when we stand in just a few minutes, we will sing by the power of the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we pray.